The Central Committee for China's Communist Party is meeting today for a long-awaited four-day round of discussions. This is the first time the Central Committee, known as the Politburo, has met for almost two years, fueling speculation about discord within the party. Kerry Allen is the BBC's China media analyst, so why has it taken so long for this meeting to happen? There has been a lot of rumours, yes, in in recent months related to why they've not met. But also China had a number of circumstances that it wasn't expecting this this year. So things like the Hong Kong protests that kicked off in June, but also uh, the ongoing Sino-US trade war. There was the hope that China would would bring things to a closure, but this has continued rattling on. Uh, There were also, there was a key event this year, which was the 70th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party as well. So that took a lot of preparation. But um, but yes, it's, it's China's not treating this as anything out of out of the ordinary right so nothing out of the ordinary but it is an important meeting it is yes it's a it's a gathering of 370 people in china's central committee so they're the top people in china's government body and they meet to discuss laws issues and uh, and yeah basically the most important changes that china will be going through in the in the months to come and in the context of issues when given that you've mentioned that word presumably the the trade war and the the huge political crisis facing hong kong will be things that might come up yes absolutely but china's quite it's made clear its lines on both of these stories. So, uh, well, particularly with Hong Kong, it's it's closed ranks and, and there was suggestions that one of the things that might come up in this meeting is whether Carrie Lam might possibly be replaced, the, uh, the chief executive for Hong Kong. But media reports in recent months have suggested that that's unlikely to happen because China said that it's very happy w- with what the leadership and the local police have done. And uh, and so so it may be discussed, but it's one of the things that China hasn't been signalling there's going to be any major, major changes with. And regards to the trade war, uh, there's uh, there's continuous debate about this, what's going to, get, what's going to happen next. But uh, uh, but one of the other interesting stories that, that have been coming out of independent media in Hong Kong and Taiwan is whether Xi Jinping is going to signal a successor in this uh, in this event. So when you say whether he'll signal a successor, presumably that won't be known even if he does uh, point his finger at somebody. It won't, no. And it's unlikely that he would say, this is my successor, because... Well, well, also, there is the question of whether there will be a successor full stop because back in 2016, Xi Jinping announced that uh, he was going to abolish the leadership rule for life, which means that after a certain term, um, people vote for a leader. And uh, and there was the suggestion that he might join the ranks of people like Mao Zedong in, in being a leader for a much longer term, uh, possibly for life. And that was uh, Kerry Allen, the BBC's China media analyst, uh, signalling to us uh, once again how secretive China's uh, system is, what happens inside the Politburo.